One or two or one, two, three. Hello and welcome to another edition of Speakeasy. And tonight our featured performer is Matt Foley. Matt is a professional musician in the local Bay Area. He's also a teacher, plays a lot of performances, and we're just anxious to talk to him about this marvelous classical guitar. Matt, hi, welcome. Hey. <laughs> what drew you to the classical guitar when everyone else is like playing rock and reggae and all this, and here you are with a classical guitar, no amplification, what's uh, what would do that? Well, when I first started uh, learning guitar about six years ago, I I, I started uh, teaching myself how to read. I thought that's what wow. you were supposed to do. So I just started uh, just like a basic uh, book, one, like a guitar method book. Book uh -huh. one started to uh, do some basic reading, you know, just learning all the notes in first position, and then uh, I came across. Just uh, some uh, classical guitar pieces, uh, like simple, you know, just like like, uh, like these type of things. Like these types of things. It's beautiful, <laughs> of course. Yeah, and then uh, and then I I don't know I just been like really attracted to that. Um, and then after a while of doing that, I uh, found a classical guitar teacher, uh, Matt Grasso. I uh, was in Davis, and uh, he really kind of inspired me to uh, take it further, you know, and sort of try to make a, a, a career, a life out of it. <laughs> you know, Bach so. said that the classical guitar is a mini orchestra, and you prove that to me every time you play. <laughs> you, you bless me with that guitar, buddy. Yeah. It's so yeah. cool. Um, another thing, it's very unusual, you have a seven-string right, right. classical guitar. Wow. That's... Uh, that's unusual. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Uh, sure. What is the seventh um, string? Well, the Milo seven... is an E, so you're, do you have an yeah. E on the bottom? My, uh, well, my E would be here, like yours, the sixth okay. string. Mm -hmm. And then I have another uh, string lower than that, a B. So I have a low. Well, you can actually tune it to different notes. Uh, a lot of times I'll have it at B. I so, hope the camera mm -hmm. can zero in on that. He's got an extension piece yeah, so over the headstock, a, so he gets extra notes up here. Yeah, so What's, this, this instrument is actually called an extended seven-string guitar, mm -hmm. which uh, 
my teacher Matt Grasso uh, came up with this idea uh, because he would be doing uh, he'd be doing transcriptions of transcriptions of like orchestral works, like he was telling me about. Uh, he did a transcription of Rachmaninoff's uh, Symphony Number no. Two, well, one movement from that. And uh, he I said, "I can't even pronounce it, much less play." <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, and uh, so he said he was working on that, and uh, it just it just wasn't uh, the six string, just wasn't uh, it just wasn't doing the piece justice. You know? mm -hmm. So he decided uh, to start doing seven string, not just for that reason, but right. that's one of the reasons. Um, and then it's a very novel idea. It's, yeah, <laughs> I play a seven string jazz guitar, and I have a low A on it. But I don't have the extension piece. Like yeah, so this is so that's why it's called an uh, extended seven string. So it ta you you have a lot more possibilities here. So you it's can actually, move you can move this, uh, and so like this would be a a low A now. Uh, you know, so you could you know now when you play like oh my these gosh, what flavor? You know, instead of like which still sounds good, you know, but and then also like uh, when you're doing. When you're doing uh, transcriptions, like I did this transcription of this uh, uh, violin sonata, well, the third movement from Bach's violin sonata in A minor, um, usually, you know, it starts out like, uh, like that, um, you know, because, of course, you don't have, this is your lowest C on That's the correct, six string guitar, right. but on uh, seven string guitar, you can have this low C here, oh you know, so you can, gosh. you can do things like that, so you can sort of change it, so they're like, uh, so you can sort of do things like that. Man. It's just, doesn't it add a lot of richness it's great. to it, It's actually not that novel a concept. It goes back to about the 16th century with an instrument called the lute theorbo. Really? Which is a lute with the same kind of thing, extended range, a little catch. They had more bass strings than that, though. I, yeah, yeah. I saw a lute player on a TV show backing up Sting, and he was using one of those things, and my God, it sounded like, a, it, it sounded like two guitar players and a bass player all playing at once. Oh one God. guy on a lute. Incredible. Oh, wow. Just incredible. Well, if we have any out in the studio audience and you'd like to be part of this, we'd like to have you bring that instrument and, and participate. If That'd anybody's got a lute out there, bring it in. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's great. And Matt, um, who makes this guitar? This is uh, this, You just don't walk into a shop and get no, a seven-string no. <laughs> classical guitar. No, you can't. Um, this is actually, this particular guitar was actually built by a guitar builder in Fair Oaks uh, near Sacramento named Waylon Carpenter. And uh, I think he did a really good job on it. <laughs> Beautiful. It even has an extended fretboard, it looks right, like. Right, yeah. So you can, uh, like, this would be your, like, a lot of guitars would just go up to, like, a high B. So then you have a C, C sharp, and D, just for more uh, more possibilities. Can you play just a little something up there to just uh, give us an idea of what it would <laughs> sound like? To um, okay, well, like... Usually, when you play this high, you're not you're not like you know it's, it's not it's, an effect. it's not for a sustain you know it's mm -hmm. you know you you might be like you know up here like this uh, you know also it kind of it kind of helps like when you're doing uh, harmonics uh, you'll know right where that like right where that it's note is beautiful you know? um, so it kind of helps like that of course you don't need that if you, if you play if you don't have that extension you can still find it. Um, they, just won't, they won't have a fret under it, so it'll be a little harder. <laughs> oh, it's beautiful. You know, the woods have to be so unique, so balanced to handle the lows and the highs of that instrument because you're, yeah. you're going from one extreme to another. Instrument it's, like this was really designed for pickups, I think. Mm. With amplification would really bring that low note out. I'll bet, I'll bet all those lute players back in the Renaissance period <laughs> and later would have loved to have had Marshall stacks. You know? <laughs> <laughs> the only thing that would make that instrument more unique is if it was left-handed. <laughs> <laughs> and Matt, you, uh, you also use a cushion of some sort when oh, you yeah. play. Can yeah. you talk a little bit about that? Uh, yeah, this is called a dinerette. And That's why my chords didn't sound good to <laughs> Yeah, it just, uh, like, this This is sort of the traditional uh, classical position. Uh, it kind of, 
it kind of takes, I think, if you, I mean, you could play like this, you know, just fine, but I think... Uh, without the foot rest. Yeah, without this. But I think it makes it a little bit less tension like, in your arms and hands. Um, and also, I find it's easier to reach these higher notes, uh, you know, when you have it like this, because you, it's more vertical, right? And then if it's like this, you're kind of like reaching this way. So it makes it a little easier for that too. I, I think Dunlop for my picks, but you have fingernails that you use, right? Yeah, yeah. What, um, do you have, are they, do you shape them a certain way in order to? Uh, well, basically, uh, I, I just try to uh, kind of keep the uh, curve of the, fing of, the, of the pad of the finger. Right. I kind of use that shape to kind of guide the nail. Uh, how I file the nail. I saw that in a book, a uh, classical book. It's called uh, Pedagogy for Classical Guitar. Oh, yeah. And one time I was in Mexico City and we had classical performers from Spain come in and they wanted me to take them to a manicure so they could get the right angle, right curve on their fingernails. I thought that was rather interesting. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> it's cool. Yeah, can you demonstrate? You, you played a little bit on, of a cello piece for me. Oh, yeah. Can you do a little bit of that? Uh, sure. Which, yeah. this is a cello, by the way, in the background. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> okay. This piece is so beautiful. It's written for the cello, and Matt's going to demonstrate some of the low notes on this guitar. Yes, so this is called uh, Prelude in G Major uh, by Johann Sebastian Bach. Um, usually when guitarists play it, they six-string guitarists, they'll tune their, uh, their low E to a low D so that they can kind of uh, get more of more range, you know, of the cello, more cello range. But on this guitar, of course, you have a low C, which is the lowest note on the cello, cello right? So, yes. so you don't have to compromise, like, um, when you're playing like, things like that, you know. It's gorgeous. Uh, so you don't have to compromise, but I could play a little bit. So. Okay.
absolutely That's fantastic. That's absolutely fantastic. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. To have that whole thing memorized, I'm lucky to do 32 yeah. bars, yeah. you know? This guy yeah. has Thanks. volumes <laughs> of music memorized. Well, you said a key factor earlier, and I want to make sure that students are aware of that out there. You said how important it was to read music, that that drew you to it. Yeah, and when you yeah. begin to read music, it, as many students try to fight that idea, yeah. you can see how it encompasses and how you start bringing in things and reach for things that you normally wouldn't have reached up, reached for because your ear doesn't take you there. Yeah, I, th I think that reading music is, is very, very important. <laughs> but I also think that having a good ear is equally as important. Um, it's just kind of going the other way, you know. Uh, but I think that reading music, especially for doing like arrangements for guitar, uh, it's pretty much essential because you know you'll get the you'll get the score, yeah. you know, and you have to know like uh, you have to know like where all the you have to know like where all the C's are, exactly. right? All yeah. the positions. All That's the right. positions. <laughs> yes. Like you have to know where all the notes all are. All the notes. Because yeah. because when you're doing because when you're uh, making transcriptions. You have to... You need a springboard, especially when you're ad-libbing. You need to have something to go from, you know, yeah, and it's nice, yeah. okay, this is a C, okay, I can start. I have a starting place, and sometimes even an ending yeah. place. And also you have to know the fretboard, too, because oh, then you have to know where the notes are, and then when they're on the score and when on the fretboard, you can put them together, and then you can put them... You can put it, do all kinds of combinations. You know, you could play this C here, you know, you could play C here. Solo, um, solo performing is such an art right now, and it's a, such in high demand. And John Fine has a song he's going to uh, play for us. It's called Moonlight in Vermont. This is for soloists, solo guitar. And it's, you can see what a unique instrument it is. You've heard it with Matt, and now in a jazz vein with John. Yeah, this is going to be totally different. Now, Matt talks about reading, and I agree that reading is absolutely essential. I unfortunately had a guitar teacher that didn't teach me to read. She was a folk player. So I set about trying to read later, and I'm, to this day, not the greatest reader in the world. But my ears gotten me in and out of more trouble. <laughs> so, uh... You're now an amazing I, musician. No, I can't take credit for this tune either. This is, uh... Johnny Smith did the original version of this tune. And I, I, I don't know who wrote it. I'd have to look it up. I don't believe Johnny did. Moonlight in Vermont. Contrast in styles, jazz. Well, totally and different. I can't even begin to do what Matt does. <laughs> it's just phenomenal to me to watch and listen Thanks. to him. It's just <laughs> the discipline involved in playing that style. Thank you. Where, just... where John and I were like learning tunes, yeah. it, it, classical guitarists take like three to four years to learn one song. I don't have that much well, patience, Well, how man. complex that stuff is. <laughs> My God. Yeah. That's amazing to me. It's great. And it's wonderful. the other thing that I didn't know that you'd only been playing for six years. Yeah, well, I've been playing guitar for about six years. I've been playing gu classical guitar for about three years. When I'd been playing for six years, I was playing stuff that sounded like, uh, and it was about all I could do to go. Uh... <laughs> Yeah, 
and uh, <laughs> that was probably probably about the best I could do after I'd been playing for about six years. <laughs> so contrast it with this guy, I, who's playing Bach cello pieces yeah, after like, he's like been that. playing for six years. <laughs> man, phenomenal. Way out there, man. Yep. Yep. <laughs> That's great. Is there another little piece you'd like to perform for us? Uh, sure. Um, okay. I could kind of. I could play a piece written for seven string guitar, I guess. Um. It's so great to hear this instrument. Thank you so much for bringing it. Uh, no problem. <laughs> okay, so uh, this is a piece uh, written by my teacher, Matt Grasso, called uh, Contemplation Number Three. So there are. Uh, Three and all. Okay. So, I was going to say there had to be a contemplation one. <laughs> there's, there's one and two, yeah. <laughs> okay. So this is contemplation number three, and uh, it's based off of it's based off of kind of a different scale. It's based off a major scale with a flat six and seven. So it's like like the it's based off a C major okay. scale with flat six and seven. Like so it has kind of that kind of flavor. <laughs> okay, let's hear it. Okay.
Beautiful. Man. Fantastic. Just thing. beautiful. It reminded me a little bit of Bolero, the way he's building it up and building yeah, it up. Yeah. It's just gorgeous. Yeah. Gosh. Fascinating, fascinating to listen to you play. Thanks. <laughs> God. Well, we'd like to thank you so much, Matt, for mm -hmm. coming out and being part of this show. And John, yeah, as always. Thanks for having me. <laughs> John, do you have a uh, trivia question you'd like to ask our audience? Oh, man. You've, you've, you've sprung one on us. <laughs> uh, I really don't have anything regarding the theme of this show, which would be the classical guitar. It's not really my field of expertise. Uh, well, we'll have one next time. Yeah, we'll try to figure. And, we'll try to figure it, one out. And we're going to give you a <laughs> web address. And if you answer the question correctly, we'll send you a guitar string. And hopefully, from Dunlop, we'll have some pics made with John and Rick, and uh, we'll send you one of those too. And Matt, we'll, let's go out with this song that we did earlier in the show. So I'll have something to play. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. One, two, ready, go.